so this is the first R-rated uh, Wolverine movie and Hugh Jackman's last Wolverine movie. So was it a relief not to hold back? Well, it was exciting. I mean, what was inspiring and what, what we really set out to do more than anything about specific ratings was just to make an adult film. And, um, and that for me, the rating and the violence level was part of it, but also just raising the maturity level of the film. You know, a lot of these films are essentially made for both, you know, 12 year olds and 20 year olds. And that I thought it would be interesting to, even if we got less money to do it, to make one of these films, a comic book film essentially, that's for adults. So what was it like shooting Hugh Jackman's last ever scene as Wolverine? Um, to be honest, when we did that, I'm trying to remember the day we did that, it was such, we were so, we were racing daylight, we were losing daylight. So it all kind of happened and then suddenly, as we finished the shot, I announced it because I realized it had happened. But um, the reality is that, that you kind of, you can't be aware of it or it gets in the way of doing the work. But it is, um, it's powerful. It's amazing because, you know, it's been, he's been doing this longer than anyone's been playing James Bond longer than, I think he's the longest running character, um, actor in a single character ever. Yeah, I think he might be. I know he's like, now he's outlasted like three Spider-Man or something, yes, so it's insane. Yeah. One of the things that really blew me away during the footage was X-23. Mm -hmm. uh, so where did you find her? And, Madrid. Uh, okay. Madrid. We did a worldwide search for an amazing kid. For reasons that I can't completely explain now, we needed a Spanish-speaking uh, Latino kid. And, um, and we were also looking for someone who could, was both talented with acrobatics and an amazing dramatic actress mm -hmm. and 11 years old. So very narrow window of kids who are going to qualify in all those categories. But um, when we found, uh, I, I knew more than anything, I knew the movie was going to work when I met Daphne King. Mm -hmm. I, I was, it was the kind of great gamble. You know, like when I made Walk the Line, the great gamble was I really wanted my actors to sing. And I kept telling the studio, oh, it's going to work. They're going to be great. But I didn't know. And, and it did. But it was kind of about having faith and just believing that piece would fall into place. And in this movie, I knew how good, you know, Patrick and Hugh would be in their roles. And I knew how hungry they were to kind of go to the darker, more intense places we were leading them. But I didn't know that we'd find Alora, mm -hmm. And we did. And she's amazing. It's not every day that you get to see like an 11 year old girl doing these really violent action scenes. So how, how exactly did that work out on set? Um, well, easy. I mean, she, you know, the funny thing is, is that the, that the movie's more intense than the making of the movie. Meaning you can be laughing about all these things when you're doing it and it becomes incredibly fun for kids to jump around and stab and chop and whatever. That it's more the resulting film that is dark and troubling in the sense of violent. Mm -hmm. But also, there was a day and age when Hollywood was making films about grown-ups and children that weren't kiddie films. Yeah. Meaning, um, you know, The Bad News Bears is not like a film for seven-year-olds. Um, the original one with Walter Matthau, or Paper Moon with Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill, or um, Little Miss Sunshine is an adult film with adult themes with children in it. And um, certainly Jodie Foster in Taxi Driver is an adult film with a child in it. And part of making an adult film, but also making something that's provocative and interesting, was the idea of involving an innocent, someone that really needed Logan's protection in the intense world and reality of the movie. Logan almost doesn't feel like a superhero movie, like it feels more like a Western. So what is, what is the fact that it is a superhero movie add to you know, the Western genre? Well, in a way, superhero movies aren't a genre, mm -hmm. meaning they're just a fact, meaning it's kind of like you can make a superhero film that's a comedy, you can make one that's a kind of adventure, you can make one that's a western, you can make one that's a gang picture or a horror film, but they can be the single fact, what makes it a comic book movie, I guess, is that it's based on a comic book but more so that often the protagonist has got powers of one kind or another, um, extra, um, something beyond the ordinary. And, um, but that's it. It would be like a Western, making a Western about a character with um, knives in his, knives that come out of his knuckles. And the, to me, the advantage of doing that is you know what you're making. Meaning, like I said, um, uh, 
comic book movies don't have an identity. There's there's as many kinds. There's Avengers. There's movies like Guardians. There's movies like uh, there's movies like Deadpool. There's movies as somber as the Dark Knight series. It can it's it the the word comic book movie doesn't define the movie, and it's up to us to bring um, a kind of genre and a sense of tone. I think that's what hopefully makes Logan original is that we've staked out a kind of new tone and something you haven't seen. I know it's Hugh Jackman's last X-Men movie. Is it also going to be your X-Men movie, or do you think you might come back in, sometime in the future? I have no idea what the future holds, but I, um, I certainly am looking forward to doing a different kind of film since I've done two Wolverine movies back-to-back.